Yeah, today I want to give you an introduction talk about Vue.js and therefore I called it Hello Vue. And yeah, as I said, my name is Roman Kuba, working at CodeChip and on Twitter you can reach me at CodeBrio. And I usually try to tweet a lot of Vue.js stuff recently, so yeah. Um, so what is this Vue stuff you maybe heard about? Like it's a lot of buzz right now in the internet, I hope, at least. That's where I'm in the bubble. And the first thing I learned is it's pronounced like few, like the few, like of the few part, and not view or view or something like this. So that was like the challenge in the beginning. I thought, oh, that's a weird name, but that's cool. Um, and general, what it is, it's a progressive framework. And I would say it's technically similar to what React does and more the fiber component that's coming out soon. So it um, leverages virtual DOM components is kind of uh, one of the core uh, principles of using Vue.js and it tries to go a similar way than React does like have a small slim core and try to have external libraries to extend the functionality you need. And if you want to read more there's a very interesting comparison guide between those two that's like not trying to bias in one direction it's more like saying okay what are the benefits of one or the other. Um, then the other thing it's also uh, view you will see it while we see some code examples it's partially inspired by angular more the version one um, it leverages the data binding you use in the dom attributes um, this was the initial thought when evan Yu, the creator of UGS, started working on it he was interested how angular does all the data binding and then he tried to reproduce it and eventually he came to the point okay that's very fast for prototyping certain parts and therefore it was a very useful tool come to quick results. Um, and one key fundament in building it for Evan Yu was always, it tries to, should be simple, but in the same way powerful, and just kind of go through the whole design of Vue.js itself. Um, and therefore I thought, okay, let's start with a simple Hello World example, the simplest one you could imagine. And all you need to do is actually just drop in Vue.js, in this case from a CDN, and then I say, okay, like here I have an application and I use those mustache tags to put out some data. And that's like my all my scripts I would need to do to kind of get a hell world printed on that page. Um, so one thing you note here is that we have like this element thing that binds to the root cause of the um, of your view application of the root instance. Um, so yeah. Um, so after this, what, what are the things that you should know about the view instance before we go deeper things? Like, as we saw before, like the element, the EL tag, or key, uh, it's the, the entry point for the root instance of your view application. So this means you can also run like multiple root instances on one page, but usually that's not the case because you try to leverage components as much as possible, but this is the entry point. Um, then there's a data object we also saw before in the Hello World example. That's kind of like just actually the data you want to use inside of Vue and the one kind of that dictates how certain things look alike. Um, then there's another key on the main object that's called methods. And those are just functions you want to call and they will help you kind of like whatever you want to do, like those are just simple functions you can find to the Vue instance. And there's a very handy thing that's called computed properties. And those are actually just like calculated and cached values you can generate based on the data, or they could be quite complex and costly in processing, but as you compute them once or so, you cache them for them, how often you call them again or so, it's fine. So you don't get a big performance impact of those. And then there are of course lifecycle hooks. Um, and those are mostly there to do some certain stuff depending on the life cycle you want to hook in. Um, another core fundamental is, of course, like how to use templates. And what I liked about Vue is that the starting point is very, very easy because every valid HTML piece you have is kind of a valid template you can use in Vue. And by default, you would use handlebars and you can use directives. Um, on those tags or so to dictate how the application should behave and what should it do. So we saw, okay, there's this handlebar called, yeah, this kind of, we want to put out something called message, and this is just for printing out data. Um, 
there's a VON um, directive that says, okay, you can bind events to a certain element or so. That says, okay, this should happen when you do something. For example, VON click. And there's also a VBind, what allows you to bind certain data to something or so, or kind of to have interacting bindings on that element. And you mostly use it to pass down data to components or to dictate like little bits and pieces on elements. And then there's a V4 loop, what will actually just allow you to iterate over kind of collections of something. Like we will see here, okay, for item in items or so. And I thought, okay, like, yeah, all slides is boring. So let's do some live coding and hopefully I don't <laughs> fuck up completely, but let's give it a try. So um, let's see, I prepared a little example here. We're going to do a simple to do task list. Um, yeah, and we try to leverage what I just showed you up front. So all we need to do is kind of in the script part, we just say yeah, like new view. Um, and this is kind of how we call our object itself. And all we learned, okay, we need to bind it to a certain element. In this case, we have an app element here, and we want to bind this to the root instance of our application. Um, so then I said, okay, there should be something called data on the instance. And in this case, we have some data prepared out here, the tasks actually. And what I do here is I just like um, define them correctly, kind of pass them in and say, okay, like those are the tasks you should use. And Vue will take care of kind of setting them up reactively for you so that even if they're outside of the instant itself, they now are observable objects and Vue will, uh, will keep track of them. Um, so then we learned, okay, there's something like how to show some data in the page. And in this case, all we're going to do is like a little magic variable in this case. So we will show the data in the page. Um, let me quickly uh, format it a little bit better. Oops. So, okay. So we just see, okay, this is like a representative of the data we have on our instance. Um, so the nice thing here is, as this is data and it's all reactive, we could potentially like interact with this one on the console already. So just for purposes, I will kind of bind it to a variable here. I say VM equals, um, yeah, clear this one here. Um, so I can say like VM, for example, tasks, which should kind of print me out all those tasks that are in there. And I can say like VM, in this case, like our second task is not done yet. We could change this one here easily. So we say <coughs> VM tasks, uh, we take the second object and say, for example, done, oops. Um, yeah, and it's kind of, as you see, like it instantly updates. So like all the data you have on the task itself is reactive. So we could also say like just tasks um, one and say done equals false. And it also kind of reacts to the data we have outside of the root, of the root instance itself. Okay, that's nice. Um, then we learned something, okay, there's some operations how to print stuff on the page. So in this case, I will just create a list here and say kind of, okay, create a list item for every to-do task we have. And we said, okay, this is something called V4. And we say task and tasks. And we have already our three dots there, that's fine. So we only need to tell them what to actually say. And yeah, maybe the naming is not perfect because we now we have task with task. Um, but yeah, we see our tasks already printed out there. Um, and like, I hope this kind of shows some of the fundamentals how to work with it already. Because like we, we don't touch a lot of the, um, the logic instance itself. We don't dictate how to behave with certain things. We use the markup itself to say, how should I look like? And view is more, okay, I will take care of the data for you and render it correctly. Um, okay, then we learned there's some other directives we could potentially use. Um, I will close the console for now, um, just have more space. And we heard, okay, there's something like called V on, and we could say like click, for example, and say, 
we call something like, say, um, probably a toggle function at some point that should toggle, for example, the state on this instance. Um, we need to define it here. Um, do, do, do. And here we can say toggle, okay, be a function. And um, for this now, we'll just do, yeah, let's do an pretty alert, say hi, react. Um, and if it should work, hopefully it gives me an alert already. So that's nice. And so one thing I like about Vue as well, that's kind of made it for me step ahead from Angular a lot is like the V on kind of looks super repetitive and it's kind of annoying. Um, so you can just do like at, in this case, like as a short syntax and say at click. And what you can actually do, like there are some things you very often do, like you have an event and you want to prevent default or kind of stop propagation. Um, you can do this quite easily here. So just say, um, click and say prevent here, for example, then it's automatically prevented and you could even like stop it if you want to stop propagation. So that's all clear here, but we don't need this here. Um, so what we actually want to do is we want to toggle the state of our task. So in this case, it, it's not the ideal approach here, just to be, um, just try to show it like you would not probably not pass in the task here to the function itself, just to get a feeling for it. So here we pass in directly a reference to our reactive um, variable in this case, and the task itself. And all we'll do is like say task dot done equals oops, task dot done. So um, get away. So this should toggle the, the state of our um, tasks. So as we see on the top one here, we kind of can really click them and see, okay, the state changes already. Um, so that's quite nice. And then there's another one thing. Um, we want to visually show right now how a task, what's the state like. Usually we don't see the data here, so you don't know what's kind of the state of this task. Um, so what I'll do here, um, I will just break it into multiple lines. It's a little more readable. Um, I had, I mentioned another directive, what was called vbind. And in this way, in this case, we want to bind something, for example, to the class attribute itself. And let's say, okay, we want to bind something to the class. And uh, here we have multiple options how to do it. Here I again choose the kind of the sleaziest one. Let's say, okay, we want to bind a class called done to the object. Um, and this one should be based on task.done, so should be based on the status of this one. Um, and so we see the first one is already like line through, and we can now like change this one quite easily. So yeah, any questions so far? All cool, nice. Um, then yeah, let's proceed a little. Uh, we mentioned, okay, components is a big part here. Like we now create a one root instance, and this is like obviously not maintainable at some point. Um, so, and I personally would like to go an approach where I say, okay, like how to logically structure those um, things. And where I say, okay, like I probably have my root thing, what's only the app. It should take care maybe of some app findings or global things of my application. But then I want to have a component probably to take care of tasks. And then each task should be its own component. Um, yeah. And there's also view is very simple here. So how you would define it is just say like view component. And in this phase, I would define tasks uh, with the name. And then I could pass in the template here. So okay, like the list item that's similar to the one we wrote before. And here we could use data again. Um, see here one difference we did on the root instance it is in this case, data is a function, not a direct object. Um, because like op um, components are reusable, therefore you want to have every component return its own kind of set of data. You could also return an object here, but then kind of like all the components would, would share the same object because the base of the same kind of data object. So we want to return a new set of data for, for everyone. Um, and in this case here, we define the component just on a global level. We say, okay, this is a component you should know about. And whenever we create a tag somewhere that's called tasks, then Vue will take care, okay, I know about a component, I will put it in there. And of course, there is something like scoped components as well, where you can just say like this component should only be available in another component or in a certain app or so. Um, 
again, see this one in action. In this case, I don't want to code everything up, so I prepared it a little bit here. Mm. So it's basically the same example we built before, but in this case, like split up to components. And usually how I approach it um, is I try to go kind of like bottom up. So start from the smallest component and kind of try to get, you don't want to pop into. So the first one defined here is the task. We say, okay, like this is a list item. We bind the class the same we did before. We have to click the toggle and kind of print everything out here. Um, then something you uh, you will see here is new, that's the props key. In this case, props would define kind of like data you want to put down, uh, um, pass down to the component from outside. Um, yeah, so our big container for all the apps is actually in this case a tasks component, where it's okay, like my URL. And in this case, like I really want to render for each task and task, I wanted to render the task component itself. And here's this little magic thing, use vbind again, and we bind something to the task attribute. And in this case, like task will be passed down here. So it's available here. Okay, and as we see our root instance in this case is behind, behind here, but it's like super small. So it's not more than this. Okay, um, that, that was all pretty nice or so. Um, and there's another cool thing that's called single file components. Um, and this is like, you could have a file that has all your JavaScript code of the component itself. Um, you have a file that has like all the markup in the same file, and you could also add all the styles in there. And this was something that sounded pretty appealing to me. Um, so, and the cool thing is, I could kind of use whatever kind of language I like for every part of those. So, how could this look like? In this case, this would be a simple file called something.view. Um, and here I say, okay, like I would define here my template and I could say, um, here I could write like my list item, should how it should look like, or eventually I can use something like Puck, what's the new version of Jade, or you can use like Slim here. And this is all where you would define kind of what language you want to use for writing up your templates. Um, yeah. Then here, of course, the script. You can also use CoffeeScript or TypeScript, whatever you like in there. And then you can use, like for CSS, you have the same choose of options again. And one thing we I did here. Yeah, Sorry? Yeah, yeah, of course, we could use SAS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just a little content editable piece or so that's not interactive, but I have when something prepared. Um, one thing I have here is um, I added a scope attribute to this one, and that would allow you that you kind of like have, um, I would say similar to styled components, what you do there, that you have a scoped version of all the CSS. So it will create a random hash, and kind of whenever you use a class up there somewhere, like I could say, um, I have a list item with the class of task. Um, here I could reference it, the task, oops, the task, and give it like some color. And eventually what you will do when you render the components, um, you will have it with a hash in front. So it would be something like the task. Okay. Um, and there's actually like, this is more a uh, little bit more advanced example of the whole task list we did before again. So here we define our template where we have, okay, in this case, don't componentize it in multiple view files, but only use one. But here we do the list item again, or so we have the template in here. This is how our script would be exposed, and this is where we use, in this case, for example, SAS up here. And this is how one file would look like. Um, and that's all pretty cool so far. And then maybe, okay, how can I use it? And in this case, the answer is something, use Webpack or Browserify, and Vue has loaders and Viewify components for using those libraries and build those kind of files. And what's smart about the extra languages, Vue does not take care of like saying, okay, ooh, there's another language, I need to have a certain, or prepare my own loader for using it. When you use Webpack and using the language attribute and one of the script tags, you can use whatever language you like. You only need a loader for this one externally from Webpack to be supported. Um, and then you will take care of the rest to say, okay, like you have something that's compiled SAS or so, you have a SAS compiler and I try to call this one for you. Um, yeah, 
and in general, also Vue has a very nice ecosystem around it already. Um, Vue Router, Vue X, what's similar to Redux. Um, yes, very nice Vue Dev Tools. I want to show you quickly here. Um, blah, 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 blah. I think that's the one. So, okay, I guess JSBin doesn't let me allow to use them though right now. Um, okay, that's too bad. Sorry for that. Um, I guess I will just show you one of the screenshots here. Um, so that's like simply how it looks like. You have a complete tree of all the components you have in there. You can support like how you state of the application looks like. You can track events and all this kind of stuff or so. So that's a very nice and handy tool. Um, and there's another thing like Nuxt. And I think that's also compared to Next. And one thing that you may also <laughs> realize already that the Vue ecosystem tries to find weird names for things and just try to replace <laughs> wherever possible the let letter E or something with U, wherever you see. And then there's Weeks. Don't ask me why. And there's a ton of other li libraries. And the ecosystem right now is really, really growing constantly. And this year, there's also the first Vue.js conference. Um, but before, one thing I have for finishing, um, we talked like, okay, there's this little example and view files. Um, you wanna see those in action or so. This is here in my editor. I have a view loader and here can like use everything in here. And actually in the browser, oops, you can see like, this is the one I rendered in here through the view component. So it's not super amazing, but it's, Working through a view file, that's cool. Um, but you can do amazing stuff with Vue as well. And there's one example, didn't, wasn't coded by me, but it also goes in a very similar direction. It's very simple from the code point of view, but it already has like a lot of animations in there for kind of all different kind of things. Um, and there's another kind of cool feature of Vue itself. It tries to focus a lot on the UI itself, on the behavior and transitionings and staggered animation and this kind of stuff is all baked into view how to easily use those. Uh, in this case, you would use a tag called transition group, but can say like, okay, you can give it a list. And then on the template here, you would define them where they say, okay, like all animations in there should be staggered. And yeah, you have support for this kind of stuff from you out of the box, what's pretty nice. Um, yeah, that's it from my point. Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah. Are you somehow feeling that this is because what I'm seeing here is uh, an article in Bottom Media, which kind of probably has a lot of the things which I had in the last week, and there are one which just kind of just works. Magic. But the other one you had this. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. So, and this kind of more plays in the point that Vue tries to be very accessible and user friendly and tries to um, get it going super fast because it comes from the point that it tries to do prototyping of user interfaces very quickly. And also, Evan was inspired by Angular in designing it, the first part. Um, regarding the magic or so, here I can persuade you that it's like not so much magic. Um, I read through most of the Vue core. I don't understand everything, but like, it's not so much code, it's very kind of understandable, very nice structured, um, very clear, and there's like not a lot of magic involved actually. So kind of the biggest point is that um, you leverage just uh, observable objects and tries to say, okay, where can I use observable objects and try to let actually like JavaScript itself handle certain relations and don't try to do magic, uh, like I would say digest cycles and all this kind of thing that was done in Angular. So it's all in this case like core JavaScript what's ported. Um, that also means like you cannot use Vue on browsers that don't uh, support observable objects. 
that's would say the downside maybe. Um, I would say it's a similar thing. So like RxJS is also going the direction that I want to say, kind of work, create reactive kind of variables and objects for you to watch it. And I would say they go in a very similar direction, but they can also play hand in hand very nicely. So you can use Rx with Vue.js quite easily. Just say, okay, like in this case, I have a Rx variable and then you know, okay, like this is already observable and everything. And then Vue will kind of just use it and put the heavy lifting on Rx. So you can kind of really control every bit and piece from it. And regarding the magic on templates, you can also use like really render functions that you maybe know from React. Um, you can define, you can use JSX for all the templates. You can do whatever you like. You have server-side rendering as well. So in this case, like the template part is only the, the approachable and easy thing. And there's another view uh, runtime component that has the template parsing not built in that would only leverage render functions. And if you say you build your whole stuff based on render functions, then your core is even a little smaller and even a little faster. You. <laughs> Um, yeah, so actually just recently they released a new update or so, or I think they baked it in with 2.1 or so, and uh, that they support the Webpack code splitting now way better, and you can now kind of leverage it through Webpack. So can you just like define um, certain points where this could work with render functions? Um, to be honest, I have not used it yet directly, I only know it's there. Um, I think as far as I know, it tries to leverage as much as possible the automatic web splitting, the um, code splitting that Webpack provides. Because Webpack says, okay, like um, this is parts that I can kind of like run independently of each other. And Vue tries to be very explicit and say, okay, like this is a piece that's kind of contained in itself. And then Webpack is very easy on picking those up. But I'm pretty sure there are also options that you can say like split these manually extend. Yeah, that, that someone asked. Like, first of all, thank you for giving the brief and coming here and reacting. <laughs> 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 And um, I saw you said like view.component or so to register a component. Mm -hmm. um, that means basically view has some kind of global internal state where it registers stuff. Or um, can you work around that? Because I could see that this becomes a problem if you want to do like view inside view or whatnot. Um, so one thing you would probably or should not do, and that's what kind of you tries to prevent you is to have like two root instances in each other. So whenever you um, just recently or so I found someone on um, uh, what's the page? Like where everybody Stack Overflow, yeah. <laughs> Never watch it. Yeah. <laughs> but there somebody had the same problem, had like tried to instance two root instances in each other and the one in the bottom couldn't find a certain variable that it was defined there because it was not defined in the parent one. Um, so this kind of drives drives you in kind of a corner, but that's where you should leverage components as much as possible. Um, actually, in this case, the, the component part is just there's a function that's called view extend, where you can just kind of extend, like view what you want to do with it. And component itself is just a little syntactic sugar about the extending of the main object. So you can actually do whatever you like or so. You don't have to use a component, view component approach. You can use extend and kind of um, use your custom objects you try to use and leverage and kind of, yeah, you have all the power you want to do, just Vue tries to help you get there faster if you like. Um, hi. Hi. I wanted to ask, you mentioned initially this blog post uh, that compares React and uh, Vue. Can you give us maybe a gist of uh, what the pros of both frameworks are? Um, so, like in general, it tries to say that um, depending mostly on the, the use case you want to do, that's like still React has like advantages, um, I think on some of the, or like if you, it's hard to say, like performance wise, it's super hard to say. There's also a part of performance tests where I say like, okay, there are specs where Vue is like 10 times faster than React. 
but then there are also like tests where React is 10 times faster than Vue. So always depending on what kind of uh, kind of application you want to run, what you want to do. And therefore, like both have their strength. I would say whenever it comes to the really user parts where you want to have a lot of interactions with, for example, with SVG animations, even like this, um, Vue is like very, very handy because it tries to, um, or it almost always hits the 60 frames per second for what it does. Um, and therefore, for this kind of stuff, it's like very, very handy to use. Um, React is maybe a little more advanced than really, really big applications. And that's mostly based on a system that um, Vue takes a little bit more startup time because it tries to set up all the observable objects for you. So eventually, you will have like a super good performance once it's set up, and that can outperform React on some parts. But the initial load time, for example, yeah, you could be behind like by 20 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, depending on what you want to do, because like the, the cost of setting up the observable objects um, is a little higher there. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, like in this case, I, I'm pretty sure if I would run it here, um, like, okay, not this time probably, but usually kind of view even warns you about like, you should not change um, properties that are passed down because uh, eventually they could change at any time. So usually view also tries to go to follow the data flow from top down and warns you about this kind of stuff. So I just did it here for simplicity reasons, but obviously you could use like something like events so we could say, um, we could even try it out if you like. Uh, it will probably not work, uh, that's fine. Um, so what I could do, I guess, is say this dot emit and say like, we wanna say like toggle here and maybe pass down task up here. Uh, Coming out this one here. And we can here again leverage the on property, and we could say here um, on toggle, for example, we should call our like change task um, function. Yeah, yeah, because I haven't defined it yet. Okay, that's fine. Let's say methods. Here we say think change task. Um, we pass down the task, I think. Um, and then we could probably uh, this dot tasks dot um, filter. And now I'm kind of, we'll probably look into, I always like filter, okay, what's the one I think you pass. Uh, in this case, it would be the task I get and I would call the function here. And then I check if T dot, I would say we only have the name here available. So we say T dot task equals um, task dot task we could do this um, oops there it is um, okay if we want to do this then we want to say okay like uh, t dot done equals um, I guess whoop, t dot done <laughs> Sorry? Shouldn't it be filter? Oh. You're probably right. Yeah, of course, filter would return something. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I should go to Stack Overflow. Open my ticket. Why is my code not working? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's still. There's something fishy here. Yeah. But pretty much that's how you could do and kind of like the more sophisticated you'd go, of course you would not change the data directly here. But this is how we can emit events, should change tasks, and then this would all work.
should work, kind of work. Yeah. So, yeah, I could actually ask pretty similar questions, but I would like to extend it kind of. Um, to me, like, I, I work with, on an Angular project once, and what I saw is that where there are so many options, basically no real opinions, like how to do stuff, and this is what I, what makes me feel like frustrated at the beginning and then I'm mad at the end and then I quit. <laughs> because like, I, yeah, it was unbearable. Because like, there are so many opinions like how, how to do stuff and it's cool probably if you, if you like, you want to say like, okay, I want to be flexible and stuff. But what I like about the community right now is that we're like strict opinions right now, like two people pushing these opinions in the community and trying to just like, make it right. <laughs> so how do you feel this, like, your experience right now, how do you feel about lots of mm -hmm. this flexibility versus opinion? Um, so in general, one thing I want to point out here is like the guide itself of Vue.js. So it tries, it, it's one of the best guides for any kind of like library I ever wrote, um, read. Um, and it kind of really follows the way. So very often you see the simple approach first, but the further you go the, down the guide or so, you see the way how you should do it. And, <laughs> but in the long term, I'm on, on your side, they're, they're um, especially about like the bigger application structure and their kind of stuff, there are still things that would say they're not like 100% clear how to do things. That's mostly based on because the Vue.js community is like not as old as the React community in this case is. It grew very, very fast. And like kind of common sense, how to do things, this is still something where say like, I would say it's mostly defined, but a lot of fine questions regarding more advanced things. There's still like some things you need to figure out and where the community still tries to find, okay, what's the best tool? And there are a lot of things now popping up, like how to do things. And this is a little thing here, how to introduce a helper and how to use like this library there. Um, so that's something I would say will be a big focus of this year that, that the community tries to find the best practices. And there's honestly only one really good book out there so far. It's called The Majesty of View. And it's, yeah, like there's not a lot of literature around it already. And so not a lot of people have brought it to the point that it's okay, like we have like really large, huge productions. Like React comes from Facebook and there's almost no application as big as Facebook. So they have a lot of experience with how, how to do this kind of stuff. And even Vue.js is growing and especially it's growing like crazy currently in China. So like Alibaba, they officially adopted it for a lot of things and they're behind weeks and kind of they push a lot into the, the Vue community itself. Um, so there will be a lot of, exp um, I would say, outcomes out of this in the new future, I would say. And they just rewrote React? Um, no, maybe? <laughs> yeah. One very quick question. At the beginning, you you kind of started with something very strong. You said it's very similar to React Fiber. Also. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So like from um, we had last time we had to talk about React Fiber, how you or how React tries tend to handle certain events. Like we had this with a lot of components rendering, and React Fiber is kind of smoother. You're using request animation frames and how to do certain things. And this is where Vue 2.0 started at already. So they did a complete rewrite of Vue from 1 to the 2.0. Um, what's cool is like the, the API was almost not breaking. They cut away some things to make it even more easier, where say kind of, we kind of use plain functions and objects as much as possible and don't need to bake my custom things around. But regarding library, they um, used the virtual DOM library. Uh, I think it's called Snap DOM or so. It's one of the bigger ones. Um, they leverage this one um, and then kind of like they try to, um, from the core principle, they try to have request animation frame and 60 frames per second, uh, one of the main targets when building 2.0. Yeah. 